Hello everyone. Pagpatuloy natin yung ating discussion sa accounting for partnership formation. So, nandito na tayo sa second lecture, pero partnership formation pa rin yung ating topic. Noong lecture 1, it is more of conceptual, more of theoretical. Sa ngayon naman, computational kasi pag-uusapan natin yung measurement ng mga partners' contribution upon formation of a partnership. Now, if you will just go back doon sa definition ng partnership, you will remember ano, that there are two or more persons that may contribute to form a partnership. Yung persons doon, maaring individual yan o kaya proprietors or magkahalo. Hence, we have this illustration. Two or more individuals or an individual and a proprietor o kaya naman two or more proprietors. Ang difference lang niyan, yung individuals kasi walang existing business. Samantalang, pag proprietor kasi diba, ito yung may-ari ng sole proprietorship. So, meron na itong existing business. However, regardless kung sino man yung magbubuo ng partnership, kailangan pa rin natin gumawa ng new set of books para sa partnership. Kasi remember your economic entity concept, ano? This one. Please go back to episode 12 kung nakalimutan nyo na ito, doon sa aking basic accounting playlist. Ang sinasabi kasi ng economic entity concept, yung transactions of the owner should not be mixed. Hindi natin dapat paghaluin yung transactions ng mga may-ari doon sa transaction ng negosyo na kanilang itinayo. So regardless of the form of business organization, mapa sole proprietorship man yan, mapa partnership man yan, or mapa corporation or other types of business, kailangan separate yung recording ng mga transactions ng negosyo versus doon sa transactions na personal in nature. Okay? So we have to prepare a new set of books. Please remember that. Now, let me just go back then doon sa types of contributions na pwedeng i-contribute ng mga partners. Kasi pwedeng money, property, or industry. Kaya nga, di ba, meron tayong capitalist partner. Meron din tayong industrial partner. Pero kung lahat ng yan ay kinontribute ng isang partner, ang tawag sa kanya, capitalist slash industrial partner. Now, for the purpose of measurement, ano, here in partnership formation, Kapag ang contribution mo ay money, syempre, tawag natin doon cash. Pero, pag property yung contribution, ang tawag natin doon non-cash assets. So, ibig sabihin, other than money, ang contribution ng partner ay maitatawag natin as non-cash assets. So, ano-ano ito? Kung inventory ang kinontribute, o non-cash assets yan. Kung receivables ang kinontribute, non-cash assets yan. Or how much more kung ang kinontribute niyan ay land, building, office equipment, no? office space, or kung ano pa mang properties, we call it non-cash assets. O yung industry, hindi natin yan kinakategorize as non-cash asset. Kasi alam ninyo, although valid na contribution yan, pwede mong i-contribute yung skills mo, yung labor mo, yung expertise. It is difficult, however, to measure such contribution. Kaya hindi natin ito binavalue. Hindi natin ito minumonetize. Hindi natin nasusukat kasi kung magkano ba dapat ito. So, hindi natin siya nire-recognize sa libro. Okay? So, tanging yung mga money and properties yung ating nire-record, mini-measure, at ipinapasok sa libro ng partnership. Okay? Now, the question is, magkano ba dapat natin ito inire-record? How much is the contribution? Ano? Remember this statement, assets and liabilities transferred are recorded at the fair market values at the time of contribution. Remember this one, assets and liabilities. So, ibig sabihin pala, pwedeng i-contribute yung liabilities. Okay? Maaring meron kang liabilities kasi kung meron kang existing business. Ikaw ay isang proprietor. So, pwedeng i-assume yung liabilities ng partnership. Recorded at the fair market value at the time of contribution. Okay, 
O, eto, balikan lang natin yung cash versus non-cash assets. Yung assets ito, no, na pinag-uusapan natin. Yung cash, nire-record natin at the book value. Eh sir, akala ko ba, nire-recognize natin yung assets at the fair market value. Yes, that is correct. However, when we are talking of money, when we are talking of cash, kung ano yung halaga nun, yun na rin naman kasi yon. Yun yung face value. Yung isang libo mo, no? uh, hindi kasi natin dito kinukonsider yung fluctuating prices. So basically, kung magkano yung value ng pera na yon, yun din naman kasi yung fair value nun. Yun yung halaga nun. Unlike doon sa mga properties, kailangan natin ito i-record at the current market value. Okay. O yung liabilities transfer, no? Kasi obligations may be assumed by the partnership. Inire-record din natin ito at the fair market value. Kaya nga, in cases like this na may ina na liability, yung net asset is the capital contributions of a partner. O, remember, net assets. Kasi yung net assets is your assets minus liabilities. So, ito yung capital contribution ng isang partner. What is fair market value? Now, according sa IFRS 13 or sa PFRS 13, ang fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Sir, ang hirap naman itong intindihin. O, ganito na lang. Pag pinag-uusapan natin yung partnership, kung ano yung values agreed upon by the partners, yun yung fair value. Kapag given naman sa problem, this is the fair value, or this is the fair market value, or this is the current market value. Yun yung kukunin ninyo kapag given din yung book value. Book value versus fair value, kunin mo yung fair value. However, sa mga problems, minsan hindi given yun. Pero naka-identify doon, the values agreed upon by the partners. So yun din yung fair value na yan. Kasi halimbawa, meron tayong property, ano? merong equipment na contribute yung sole proprietor. O kailangan merong mutual consent kasi may consensus between the partners. So kung ang book value niyan ay 30,000, pero napag-agreehan ng mga partners, considering also yung other factors sa market, ano? sabihin nila na uh, sandali, mukhang nasa 28,000 yung value talaga nito. Ano? So kung yun yung napag-agreehan ng mga partners, then, 30 versus 28, you will have to pick up the 28,000. Yun yung i-record mo na value ng equipment sa libro ng partnership. Okay? So, the agreed value between the partners. Now, let's go to the illustration. So, in illustration 1, we have two or more individuals. So, on October 1, 2020, Audrey and Elgin decided to form a partnership. So, sino yung mga partners dito? We have partner Audrey and partner Elgin. So, Audrey invested cash of 100000 and merchandise inventories with a cost of 35000 and a current market value of 30000 pesos. Si Elgin naman will contribute 80000 and an office equipment with a book value of 50000 and a current market value of 60,000. O dito, mapapansin ninyo, yung mga non-cash assets, merong book value and then merong fair value or your current market value. O once again, pag given yung dalawang yan, ang ipipick up mo ay yung current value or the current market value. Kaya, pag kukunin natin magkano yung contribution ni partner Audrey, kung yung cash mo, 100,000, o hindi given yung current market value, ano, pero... Implicitly, kung ano yung value nun, yun din yung market value niya. So, 100,000 lang din yan. Yung merchandise inventory mo, kung 35,000 yung book value, pero given yung current market value at 30,000, ang kukunin natin dyan syempre is the 30,000. Such that, ang contribution dito ni partner Audrey ay 100,000 in cash and 30,000 merchandise inventory. Yung total contributed capital is 130 pesos. So that is the contribution of partner Audrey. Samantalang pagdating naman kay partner Elgin, 
Okay? O, ang contribution niya, cash, 80,000. O, book value, current value, parehas lang yan. Yung office equipment, 50,000 yung book value. Pero yung market value niya, 60,000. So, anong pipiliin mo dito? Siyempre, ang gagamitin mo is your current market value. Kaya nga, 80,000 yung cash mo, and then meron kang 60,000 na office equipment. Ang total contributed capital ni partner LJ ay 140,000 pesos. O, ano magiging entry nito sa libro ng partnership? This will be your journal entry. To record the contribution of Audrey, debit cash, debit merchandise inventory, and credit Audrey Capital for the following amounts. Samantalang, to record the contribution of LJ, we debit cash, we debit office equipment for the respective amounts, and you credit LJ Capital for this one. Okay. Oh, now, after the contributions of the partners, magiging ganito yung itsura ng balance sheet ng partnership. You have your cash contribution, 180,000. You have your merchandise inventory at 30,000 pesos. You have your office equipment at 60,000 pesos. Wala kang liability. Pero yung partner's equity mo, ayan, dalawa na. You have your Audrey Capital for 130,000. And you have your LJ Capital for 140,000. O, oh, di ba in table form ito, just like your tabular analysis, kapag ito total natin, yung dapat balance yan. Because this is your assets, this is your liability, and this is your partner's equity. Assets equals liabilities plus partner's equity. O, oh, dapat balance yan. 270 should be equal with 270,000. So, mapapansin mo, parehas lang yan in a sole proprietorship with the exception of your equity section na multiple yung capital accounts. So, unlike sa sole proprietorship, ano, isa lang yung may-ari. Dito, two or more. So, makikita mo, madami siya dito sa equity side. Okay. So, that's how we do it. Ano? Next illustration. Punta naman tayo sa two or more proprietors. At dito, meron tayong assumed liabilities. So, ang ating mga partners dito ay si Mark Syrum and si Ariel. Mark Syrum being the proprietor of Mark Syrum eLive and Ariel being the proprietor of Accounting Exemplified. So they agreed to combine their resources to start a new business called Accounting eLive. So ito yung mga napag-agrihan nila, yung net assets ng kanilang mga businesses. As follow, si Mark Syrum will contribute 150,000 cash Office supplies na may book value ng 20,000 and a market value of 17,500. And then, 30,000 worth of receivables but agreed by the partners to be recorded in the books of the partnership as 28,000 pesos. At meron siyang loans payable due in 6 months for 9,000 pesos. Kung hindi mo na kailangan gumawa ng table, pwede mo nang pick up and dito yung mga amounts. O make sure lang na hindi mo ma-pick up yung maling amount. O later on, compute natin yan, pero proceed tayo kay Ariel. Si Ariel naman will contribute his office building na currently valued at 300000 pero merong 2-year mortgage of 75000 He will also contribute 70000 cash and inventory worth 20000 in the books but to be valued at 15000 pesos. Oh, observe muna. Pansinin muna ninyo, pagdating dito kay Mark Syro, may mga ginamit tayong mga terminologies. Oh, market value, that is your fair value. Dito naman, walang fair value sa receivables, pero nakalagay dito, agreed by the partners. Yan yung correct value niya. Yung fair value. Okay? Dito naman, yung loans payable, walang ibang given ano, given lang 9,000. So, without any given information, yung 9,000 na yan, yan na rin yung fair value ng loans payable. Dito naman kay Ariel, currently valued. Okay? So, yun na mismo, yung current value mo or the market value. Tapos, dito, to be valued. Yung inventory naman, ano, worth 20,000 in the books, that is your book value. But to be valued at 15,000, yan naman yung current value. O, mapapansin ninyo, meron dito mortgage na dalawang taon. 
yung mortgage, it is a form of a liability. Ang tawag natin dyan, mortgage payable. Utang yan, secured by a property. Kung baga, may mga nakakolateral. Kung may utang ka sa bangko, nakakolateral yung bahay mo, mortgage payable. Okay? Oh, now, let's proceed with the computation. Ito yung mga contribution ni Mark Syroom. Cash, office supplies, accounts receivable, loans payable. These are the book values and these are the current market values. Siyempre, ang ipipick up natin is the current market value. Kaya, 150 yung cash, 17,500 yung office supplies. Ang accounts receivable mo, 28. Yung loans payable mo ay 9,000. O, pero dito, huwag kang magkakamali pag gumawa ka ng table na ganyan. Kasi loans payable is a liability. Instead na i-add mo yan, ibabawas mo yan. Such that, 150 plus 17,500 plus 28,000 minus 9,000, you will get 186,500. That is the total contributed capital of partner Mark Syroom. Now, to record the journal entry. Para i-consider yung capital ni Mark Syroom, debit mo yung mga assets, credit mo yung liability, credit mo yung net assets. This one, less yung 9,000, you will get 186,500. That is Mark Syroom capital. Okay? O, going to Ariel's contribution, i-plot mo lang yung mga figures, and then again, kunin mo yung current market value, you will get 310,000 pesos. Your cash is 70, your inventory is 15, your office building is 300,000. Pero meron kang mortgage payable. Nakalagay doon 2 year ano, kaya pag tinanong yung classification, that is a non-correct liability. Ima-minus natin itong 75,000, kaya mo makukuha itong 310,000. Oh now, pag ni-record natin yung journal entry ni Ariel for his contribution, o oh, i-debit natin yung mga assets, Iki-credit natin yung liability at saka yung capital. So, 70 plus 15 plus 300 minus mo itong 75, you will get 310,000. And of course, pag gumawa tayo ng partnership financial position, yung balance sheet, o in table form lang ito, no, makikita mo dito yung contributed na assets. You have your cash na 220, your accounts receivable na 28, your inventory na 15, yung office supplies mo na 17,500, at yung office building mo na 300,000. I-record din natin, that, syempre, yung liabilities mo, your loans payable na 9,000, and the mortgage payable na 75,000. And then, you have your partner's equity, yung kay Mark Syroom, and then yung kay Ariel Capital. So, pag tinotal mo yan, dapat balance yan sa baba, ang total assets mo is 580,000, ang total liabilities mo ay 84,000. Ang total equity mo ay 496,500. Pag tinotal mo yung dalawa, yung liabilities and the partner's equity, that is also 580,500, which is the same with your total assets. Hence, balance pa rin yung assets equals liabilities plus partner's equity. Okay? O, so, ganyan lang naman natin ito nire-record, you know, yung partnership formation. Uh, now, last illustration for this lecture, ano? one individual and one proprietor. Ito, may konting twist na ito. Alamin natin. On October 1, 2020, Sherlock okay, agreed to partner with Enola, a sole proprietor, for a business arrangement. Sherlock agrees to contribute cash equal to the net assets of Enola after proper valuation. O dito, hindi given yung Iko-contribute ni Sherlock. Pero ang sinasabi dito sa problem, magko-contribute siya ng cash equivalent doon sa net assets ni Inola after proper valuation. So yung net assets is the total assets minus yung liabilities assumed. Yun yung kanyang iko-contribute, equivalent doon. So basically, kung magkano yung total contributed capital ni Inola, yun din yung kanyang cash contribution. However, After proper valuation. So this is the additional information. The records of Enola shows the following account balances. You have your assets here. You have your liabilities and capital. Meron kang cash, AR, 
notes receivable, inventories, and prepaid expenses. Meron ka namang accounts payable, unearned revenue, salaries payable, interest payable, and enola capital. Now, eto yung additional information. The partners agree to the following adjustments. An allowance for doubtful accounts of 3,000 must be set up. Second, the inventories are to be valued at 26,000 pesos. Number three, there is an unrecorded liability of 5,000 due to a supplier to be paid in two months' time. And number four, another 2,500 interest will be accrued. So remember your adjusting entries. In basic accounting, ano, this is an application. Pero dito, ang mangyayari kasi dyan, kung ito yung initial na balance sheet ni Enola, kailangan natin i-adjust itong mga ito, i-consider, bago natin ma-record magkano ba talaga yung contributed capital ni Enola. Okay? O after considering that, uh, these are the journal entry. Pero, compound na ito, ano? Pero kung iisa-isahin mo, walang problema kung nalilito ka sa compound journal entry. Pero kung tama naman, yung pagkakaintindi mo kung paano ginagawa yung compound journal entry, ganito yung kakalabasan niya. O for number one kasi, kailangan mo mag-set up ng allowance for doubtful accounts. Diba, contra asset yan, kaya ang normal balance is credit. Ang effect niyan, sa yung equity na diretsyo. Instead na gumawa ka ng doubtful accounts expense, eh later on kasi ito transfer din naman yan sa capital. So debit na natin dito si Enola Capital. Next, yung inventory mo daw, magkano ang inventory mo dito? 29,500. Pero kailangan daw i-value ito at 26,000. So we get the difference. 29,500 minus 26,000, we will get the difference of 3,500. Kailangan natin siyang i-credit para yung inventories mo maging 26,000 na lang. Okay, that is for number 2. For number 3, ang sinasabi kasi dito, meron kang unrecorded liability. Meron hindi na isama sa libro. O assuming kasi na ito ay related sa expenses mo. Hindi pa ito niya re-recognize. So, ang debit niyan ay expense. Credit yung liability account. So, dito, makikita mo, pinasok natin ito sa accounts payable, yung 5,000 pesos. Ang pa-debit niyan, expense, pero ang reflection niyan ay sa capital mo, mababawasan. Kaya dito na rin natin ito ipinasok. O, yung pang-apat, kailangan natin mag-accrue ng interest. Debit, di ba? Interest expense. Credit interest payable. Kaya nag-credit tayo dito ng 2,500. Yung expense, eventually, matatransfer sa capital. So, kailangan natin ibawas yun dito. So, that we have here, 14,000 pag tinotal natin itong apat. So, that is your compound journal entry to adjust the books of Inola. O after adjusting the accounts, ganito na yung kakalabasan ng mga balanse. Naka-reflect yung mga bagong balanse in red na Pan color. O, yung allowance for doubtful accounts, naka-open and close parenthesis, naka-credit. Kabawasan kasi yan dito sa accounts receivable mo. Yung inventory mo, eto na yung new balance. Yung accounts payable mo, eto na rin yung new balance. Yung interest payable mo, eto na rin yung new balance. O, yung Enola Capital is just the net assets. Total assets mo, less your total liabilities. You will get 71,000 pesos. So, etong 71,000 pesos, pansinin mo ano, eto na rin yung cash contribution ni Sherlock. Debit to cash and credit to Sherlock Capital. Kasi kung magka naman yun, tatapatan niya raw ng pera. Such that here, debit and credit for the same amount. O after that, ganito yung magiging itsura ng balance sheet ng bagong partnership. Makikita mo dito ano, o, Yung balance ni Inola, yung cash, plus yung cash contribution ni Sherlock, naging 136,000. The same lang yung ibang mga amounts, except na nadagdagan ka dito, Sherlock Capital. Kasi, eto na mismo yung libro nung bagong partnership na kanilang binawa. Ang total assets will be the same with your total liabilities and capital. Okay? So, that's how we deal with this one. Okay? So, let me know if you have any questions doon sa ating mga illustration on how we measure the assets in partnership formation. So, you may comment down below. So, sa susunod, pag-usapan natin yung iba pang mga topics 
preferably yung partnership operations. So, until then, bye-bye!